Clearly fixed point externally. The second, floating point both internally and externally. And the third, integer both internally and externally. In the Fortran language, we would specify that the floating point, the fixed point, or fixed point to floating point would be specified by the letter F. The value W represents the, the total width of our field, such as in our card format here, the principal being four columns wide, one, two, three, and four, the letter W would specify four. The letter D, the number of decimal places which exist in this quantity. For the value of P, this would be two decimal places. Therefore, the letter 2 would appear here. In a similar fashion, we may specify floating point to floating point conversion, where E tells the Fortran program that we wish to convert floating point input to floating point internally and vice versa, where then the letters W and D represent exactly the same values same items as they did for the previous conversion. The third is specified by the letter I, meaning integer to integer conversion, where W is a field width. Since we are talking about integers, there is no need for the decimal place. Now let us go back and change our program to handle this type of operation. Since we are going to read in new values of P, R, and N, it is no longer necessary to specify what these values would be. So that these three items would be replaced by a read statement. This read statement says, read a card under control of the format which is specified as statement number two. And these are the following items we wish to read in. P, R and N. The format will be written as follows. Here we would have it as statement number two, and every time we read a card, the reading routine would call, look at this format statement to determine what the format of the input card was. Format F4.2, F2.2, and I3. Let us take this back to our card, and we can see how this ties in with the card. It says convert the first item of the principal amount from fixed point in the card to floating point internally. There are four digits in the field, columns one, two, three, and four, and two of these digits represent decimal places. In a similar fashion, F, meaning fix the floating point conversion on read-in. Two digits representing the columns, columns five and six, two digits, and both of these are decimal places. In the case of the N, it is an integer in the card. We wish to have it converted to an integer in the machine, and three did, uh, columns are reserved for the N, seven, eight, and nine. Thus, the format statement ties in directly with the format of the card. Now, since we wish to keep the original principle and use it in our printout, we will have a, an additional statement here which says, set PO, or the P sub O, the pr original principle amount, equal to the principle which you read in from the card. And then do the calculation as in the previous problem. Once you have completed the calculation, rather than stopping, we would like to print out the answer. Thus, we would have print under control of statement number three, P, P0, R, and N. And statement number three would be the format we wish for printout. This would say reserve 11 type wheels on the 407 for the output for P and place two decimal points, or two decimal places in that quantity. Same for PO, we want seven positions in output with two decimal places. R, five positions, and this includes the spacing between the various items with two decimal places, and N, five digits, all integers. Where we, originally we had three digits, we now have five digits since we want to provide two blank spaces between R and N on the printed report. 
Once we have printed out that line, we no longer would like to stop, but to go on back to statement number one and read in a new card. Thus, in the Fortran language, we have a go-to statement, which specifies go-to statement number one. Now, as you see, the program as it has now been developed is a generalized program handling under the conditions we, which we have set here in our format, any values of P, R, and N. Once the program has been written, it will be taken to the key punch operator and punched in Fortran format cards. These cards will then be taken down to the machine and placed in the read, uh, reader on the machine, along with the Fortran statement a program on the tape being read in would read these cards in and translate our mathematical statements into a machine language program. This is what we would like to show you now. Four trans system tape containing 29,000 instructions has been placed on the tape drive and is ready for operation. If the start key is depressed, you will see the first part of the four trans program read in. Following the reading in of the first part of the Fortran program, the card reader begins, calling in our program which we wrote. Then the translation takes place. Following the translation, our machine language program is punched out from the card punch. Once we have punched out the complete machine language program, we will get a printed report from the printer. This printed report will show both our actual program and the machine language program. Once the machine language printer is through, we get our machine language program in punch card form, which I'm showing you here. This program will now be placed back into the machine for running our program. The printed listing, which you see here, is the actual machine language program written in symbolic form. Our first printout. I will show you was the program in the Fortran language. As you can see, considerably less was written to produce the machine language program. In most problems, 20 to 50 percent of the pro problem preparation time is in writing the program. Plus, Fortran greatly reduces the amount of preparation needed to write a program for any of the IBM data processing machines. 